Hey there, Commanders. I noticed this on the forums um, today and thought I'd give some comments on it. Because um, this whole botting thing I view as being connected to one of my previous videos where I talked about economic disincentives. Um, for those who aren't aware, botting is just the use of different software tools to try to automate parts of the game that are not intended to be automated. So, you know, using your autopilot or your um, frame shift super cruise assist is not botting. Um, you can use it to accomplish some botting like tasks, but because the developers have provided a specific module to you, it doesn't count, and don't let any snooty people tell you otherwise. Uh, what does count as botting, though, is, uh, for example, the use of internal tools to steer your ship for you above and beyond what those two modules provide. Um, scripting tools? Uh, they they mention um, scripted commanders. It seems a little vague to me. Third parties using scripted commanders. I don't, I don't know how you would identify sus suspect accounts because they're always operating in solo play. I don't know people who do open play scripting. Um, let's see. And yeah, a lot of big guys in the community. Let's see. Lots of, of information in here, but wh what this is, is a symptom of an issue that FDEV has failed to deal with in any meaningful way for quite some time. Um, typically, when botting turns up in a video game, it's for one of two reasons. Um, in World of Warcraft, botting became a thing because the game was so popular that you could use it to power level early accounts and then sell those accounts to players who didn't want to go through the early game grind. So there was a financial incentive to do this. I am not currently aware of any financial incentive in Elite Dangerous to power level new player accounts. If that's a thing, please let me know in the comments, but I've been playing this game for a while. And I've never heard of people botting or scripting to power level for monetization purposes. It just doesn't happen. Cheating happens. Um, and most of the botting that I've heard of taking place in Elite Dangerous is about overcoming bad gameplay loops. So it's a symptom of game design that isn't very fun. Um, a good example of this would be, for example, uh, traveling long distances between star systems when exploring. Um, before they did the probe update and made it so that you had to actually launch probes into planet surfaces to scan them, um, it was possible to develop a botting tool that could navigate to different star systems and then scan all the different bodies in the star system since you basically just had to point your ship at them for a little while. It's very boring gameplay and it's not too hard to automate. Um, another aspect of, of botting that can be resolved is the running of low-value trade routes ad infinitum over a 24-hour period. Um, cer certain trade routes you can do this with easier than others. Multi-jump routes are kind of hard to work with, uh, but single-jump trade routes where you might only net a million or so a run, maybe less. You can just have the bot constantly run it for you in the background and periodically check your computer to deal with the ship being interdicted by pirates or different things. So that's what botting is for. Um, I would contend that part of the problem Elite Dangerous has that is causing the botting issue is that several of the gameplay loops are just so irritating to deal with and so not engaging that they're easy to bot and so players will bot them so that they can multitask. That doesn't mean I agree with what they're doing, but I do understand why they're doing it. And Elite Dangerous is the kind of a game that could, in theory, add gameplay loops that would disincentivize botting by allowing players to perform some tasks passively in the background. Um, one of the ways that this could actually be done is by using fleet carriers. So I, I've mentioned before uh, that I thought fleet carriers were cool, but they needed a little bit of tweaking that there was a huge opportunity in Elite Dangerous for the game to incorporate some management simulator aspects that it's been missing for quite some time. And I see this as a symptom of, of FDEV maybe maybe should take a look at this again and reinvestigate the idea of allowing players, commanders in particular, who have lots of time in the game and who have amassed lots of assets, to be able to leverage those assets in a passive way to generate some revenue. Not an infinite amount of revenue, and certainly not as much as a player who's actively got their shoulder to the wheel pushing along through the game to get things done. 
but give players the ability to interact with the game passively, as an optional loop, and potentially do some of the more mundane or boring tasks without needing to physically play the game, and that their ability to be successful in doing so should be based largely on their ability to manage in-game systems effectively. I think that would go a lot farther uh, to solving the botting issue than trying to come up with uh, well, I don't know what any cheat you can come up with. In a peer-to-peer -peer system, your computer is authoritative. There's not a lot of power that they have to stop people from botting, especially if they're using randomizers or are being intelligent about when and where they use their botting tools. So, unless FDev wants to put a lot of more, a lot more money into their server infrastructure, I don't think that botting or cheating is going to go away because it's an infrastructure problem more than it is a, a programming problem. Peer-to-peer -peer games just cannot deal with cheating. It's not a very efficient way to do it. Uh, if you want a good example of how prolific this can get, take a look at Destiny 2. Um, part of the reason they've had so much trouble with anti-cheat in that game is because there's not really a good way to do it when your computer has to be the authority on most of the calculations taking place. Now, they can monitor certain activities. For example, if you use your cheat tool to skip around to jump from one location to another physically changing your position on the map faster than the game knows it should be possible to do so then a monitoring server can catch that so some of the easier cheats that elite could catch would be somebody using a trainer or a cheat tool to have infinite jump range and bounce from soul to beagle point in one shot that's easy to detect because you still have to touch the transaction server to load the next system and the transaction server can know what the maximum theoretical jump range of any ship in the game is and just kick people for doing that automatically. What the system can't do very well in Destiny, and this is still a persistent problem, is it doesn't have the ability to stop you for, from wall hacking, for example, because uh, your computer isn't actually injecting any code into the game to make wall hacks work. It's just it just knows where to look in the game's memory to identify where players are on the map and it just watches that that part of the game and then relays that information on your screen. Wall hacking is um, is very difficult to detect. It's very difficult to beat and so is aimbotting. It's almost impossible to stop an aimbot from being injected into the game's code because it's doing the same thing. The aimbot is looking at this passive information and then making active decisions on it in another part of your computer that the game can't always detect. Now aimbotting is easy to see visually if the person in question happens to be live streaming or the game in question has a kill cam so that you can audit another player's gameplay on the fly. One of the big reasons why Call of Duty has a kill cam is so that you can catch aimbotters but it doesn't really do much to catch wall hackers who might be able to see your position on the map through walls. Now, infinite ammo, modifying damage tables, other little things like that, those are easier to detect, but I don't think that Elite has the infrastructure to do that yet, and I don't know why they haven't added it, but this is all kind of a digression. One of the solutions that FDEV could consider to address the botting solution is to look at fleet carriers as a management sim inside of a space sim. Instead of the commander and your spaceship, when you get to a certain level, you, it should be possible for players who are interested to be able to go in and say, okay, um, I am now the Commodore of a fleet carrier with a fleet of ships. I have X number of NPCs that I can potentially hire out, and then give me the ability as the commander to basically hire NPC crews for ships that I'm not currently flying. So if I have a bunch of ships in my collection that might, for example, be cargo ships, allow me the ability to go in and give those NPCs objectives to complete. And you might be able to limit the number of crews I can have in flight simultaneously, but one of the most boring things in the game right now is when you have to load or unload your fleet carrier solo. You might have 5, 10, 15,000 tons of cargo, and you have to do it in 750 ton chunks on a cutter or a Type 9. It sucks. So, why not in order to address the botting issue, give me the ability to hire an NPC crew for one of my ships, or for ships that are assigned to a specific fleet carrier, and then allow the fleet carrier to conduct those operations independently. So, for example, when I log into the game, I have 
let's say five crews on the fleet carrier. And I can go in and I can say, okay, while my fleet carrier is in this system, uh, crew one and crew two, I want you to fly these type nines that might be owned by the carrier or owned by me, and I just give the crew permission to operate them. Those two type nines then start flying escort missions back and forth between a station that I designate carrying a cargo that I ask them to. And as a part of this process, let's say that my cargo is treated as haulage and the NPCs don't actually own it. It's just taken from the carrier account, stuck on those ships, flown to the station, and then the NPCs conduct the sale with the fleet carrier pocketing most of the profit and the NPCs taking a certain percentage of the take. So uh, if the cargo is valued at 100 million, maybe the, the NPCs take 25%. And that's the downside to using a gameplay provided NPC quote unquote botting tool. That it is less profitable and therefore you have to lean into it to a greater extent. And also allow the inverse to be true. Allow NPCs to travel on the carrier's behalf to a local station and buy a particular commodity at whatever the market price is currently set at and then bring that cargo back to my fleet carrier. I could then assign another set of NPCs to fly combat ships that escort the cargo ships to the station and back in a recurring cycle. And that could take place whether I'm sitting in my chair actively conducting the operation or whether I'm passively doing something and could, for example, request these missions be carried out by my NPCs in a particular instance uh, remotely. With the risk being that because they're NPCs, if a player were to find them, then they could be destroyed. And that's the other catch behind this as a theoretical gameplay loop is I think it would be awesome if using these NPC tools that I'm suggesting um, could only take place in open play. So by conducting these operations you leave yourself at a substantial risk of being attacked by a commander and therefore you are incentivized to be present or to take measures to invest in the security of those ships so that they have a greater chance of completing their mission, either by scheduling the tasks to take place at a specific time, or by increasing your likelihood of success by being physically present. But nonetheless, taking these boring gameplay loops and giving me more tools to make them less boring, either by allowing NPCs to take some of the loads so that I can focus on the quote-unquote fun parts of the game, or um, by making them take so little time that the investment in conducting them is inconsequential and it is easier to use the in-game tools than to try to cheat through a botting tool. Because again, most people who are botting in Elite Dangerous, I'm pretty sure, are doing it to overcome really sucky, boring, tedious gameplay loops that have needed attention for a long time and that have not received it. That doesn't make the botters right, but it does mean that the botters have a reason that isn't necessarily about being jerks. Because there have been some parts of this game that I've desperately wanted to be able to bot because I get nothing out of them. I hate flying 20 loop trade routes for the same material over and over and over again. It is not engaging for me. And as a result, I feel like I'm confined to other parts of the game so that I can avoid those gameplay loops when they would be more fun if I were invested in what was taking place like, for example, by protecting NPCs who are hauling my actual cargo. Because in that situation, I'm in my cargo ship, I'm in my combat ship, escorting a cargo ship full of my stuff. I'm, I have a vested interest in my stuff getting to the station, and therefore a vested interest in escorting my ship to the station so that it doesn't get blown up. Other commanders might, for example, fly cheaper cargo ships and more of them so that they don't have to babysit them and they don't care if they lose NPCs along the way. But make the loss of the NPC an expensive prospect, because now you have to go hire more NPCs. You might have to pay the funeral expenses or search and rescue costs of your current NPCs. There might be other interests, like, for example, if too many of your NPCs get blown up, then the route is deemed too dangerous and your NPCs refuse to fly it anymore. But, of course, this would mean that fleet carriers would have a greater impact on the BGS and on the economy sim. So there's some give and take here, but I think it's a much more sustainable solution to address the present problem in the game than trying to drill down on the anti-botting problem, because you can do a lot more to solve it by making the game more fun. So uh, that's, that's what I've got for today. Um, 
Just let me know what you think in the comments.